Okay, uh, well, um, good to have you, no sir. Um, Irina invited me over. We were classmates in the business school. Oh, okay. And, uh, the girls' business school? Yes. Okay. And I had to tolerate her for some reason. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, forgive me. 1989, I got admitted into Uniben. They dropped me because of English. 90, went to Lasso, English issue. I went to Unical my third year. In that third year attempt, I was admitted for Agric Economics because of English. They dropped me down to Agric Education. I accepted the Agric Education because, man, I can't go and write jam again, man. So it's not going to work for me. Now, I had problems with Okonkwo in school. Things fall apart because it was English. Now you're telling me to come and write about Socrates, Aristotle, all these dead men. It was a problem. So my mom got to hear that I was doing education at Greek, and my mom disowned me. My mom is the head of the cabal, told everybody I'm no more her son, and nobody wanted to fight with her. And you're her first son? Yes. And my half brothers? Yes, I have for my mom one, and he's the last boy. Last boy. And the other uh, steps. So that now brought out a gap. So when they disowned me, nobody wanted to relate with me. I, I had a friend whose sister had a shop in Onikewaya. So he needed somebody to come and work there. So I, I accepted, I came there. So I worked three months there. On the fourth month, go I go back to school. So that affected my test. I made a third class, extra year. And NYC did not even post me. In my third year, I gave my life to Christ. I got born again. I started working with, yes, head of security. So I, I was head of security. And I, and I took security because of my experience. When I lost my father, I, the passion for security came on me. I didn't want people to lose their property or so. So that was where my niche for security. Remember I said I, I couldn't stand anybody losing his father. So if it's anything that was a threat to anybody or anybody's father or item, something in me will kick to say, look, I have to solve this problem. So it was in that interest, it was military era at that time. A bachelor was in power. We had a military administrator in Akwai Bomb State who was from Kano, and my pastor, Abel Damina, at that time was from Kaduna. Now, for some reason, I had too much faith, in quote. Somebody that he would decide to say, okay, he wants to buy a car today, he will call a contractor to bring the car, they bring the car. He doesn't have to drive, but he will drive it. So maybe he'll hit somebody on the road, and then he'll call me. Once he calls me, my responsibility is to get him out of the mess. Because we were taught in Bible school that loyalty is unto death. Yes. Now, so because of that, I cannot allow Abel to face the firing squad. So I call a deputy, I evacuate Abel, and I put the deputy, they arrest the deputy, put him in cell, I'll go and get him out. That was what loyalty was unto me. Because when I was taught loyalty was unto death, I know anything that I serve is unto death. So people now began. What have we been doing? So <laughs> people began to see that my passion, my commitment was totally out of this world. Then I began to train um, head of security team and a lot of people. So my niche began to grow in security. Then I saw a magazine called Security and Safety. Somebody brought it to church. So if I can read it, so I began to read the book, Security and Safety. And I began to learn more from it about, because they were talking more about guarding, about um, equipment for security, hand scanners. At that time, we had military people coming into church. And anytime they sit in church or they stand or they want to worship, you'll see the side arm guns all mm. over people. So I'll now call them. I say, how are you, sir? I request to see you. And because the way I used to look, I looked like somebody that was maybe from the SSS. And I said, sir, I see you have a piece on you. Um, because you have a piece on you, we will request you, you know, go and lock it up somewhere because we want to be sure that the place is cut. So the guy liked the fact that I approached him well and so I now got favor with military intelligence. So when I got favor with military intelligence, they began to induct me more into what I should look at what I should train, that if there's a VIP coming, a big executive protection training, I started doing it. I started reading more about the executive protection. So that became sweet for me, that instead of doing all aspects of security, I should major in executive protection. Now, so I did that. I was majoring in executive protection. When VIPs were coming, 
road um, journey management, how to block up the road, cut down off one part of the road, you know, sweeping up hotels became part of what I was interested in, how to check everything and go. That became my interest. Now, from doing that, I also read more of the Bible. I, I didn't have a house, so I squatted with somebody in Oyo. I'd, I'd, been, dis I'd been disowned by my mother, so I couldn't go back to anybody in the family. What did I do? Yeah, there's, a, there's a history to it. Yeah. So my interest grew, and I started, I was still squatting in somebody's house because I didn't have the money to rent a house. I didn't understand money. So while in the person's house, um, there are three boys. It was a three bedroom, four bedroom flat. His father was a bank manager. But the lady in the house was not his mom. So we used to go and eat at his mom's day. So who was the lady there? Was the former house help. The father kicked the mother and married the house help. The house help moved in. So the house help, yes, no, so the house help the house took, took over. over. So because of that, the boys got angry periodically when she cooks food. They, have, they no, put, no, not reject, they pour sand in it. So when the father eats it, at night he will come to the room, want to rake his boys. Two of his boys had joined secret cults before, so they always used to give him problems. So now they were non Christians, but you know, certain things did not leave immediately. So no, they would try to. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it's a metamorphosis. So they used to attack the father periodically. That now pushed me to one night, the father came to the bedroom and um, brought a gun, brought a gun and then pointed it on my head. Yes, said that I was the one that was influencing his sons, that I needed to leave, three sons, that I needed to leave. Yes, 2 a.m. So I left the house. Yes, I didn't have anything to pack now. So what was I packing? <laughs> I didn't have traveling bag. I didn't have. To just leave. Just had two shirts. Two shirts. Yeah. So I left and I went into an uncompleted building. And I was there. I was not afraid of anything. It's only a snake biting me. That was. This same period? Yes. Yes. No, but uh, again, we know that he has also had experience with security Nobody and everything. To, yeah. Yeah. Still just at him. Uh, no worries. It gets, it gets more interesting. It gets very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and said, everybody's got an issue. Yeah. So when I stayed in that place, I only used to come to the house to have my bath and go when out. The man is not around. Yes. Then when they are having prayer meeting in church. I go and join the prayer meeting. At the end, some of us will sleep in church. Uh, that's the way. Then the money will, will go out. It has to work for me. My father was not a failure. So if my father was not a failure, I can't be a failure. He was hardworking. He was productive with his time. He was productive with him. So that's when I now decided that, look, something has got to break. Luckily for me, one day, while in that computer building, I heard music from the next house. Um, I believe I can fly. Wow. Uh, yes, okay. yes, 1997. From that day till now, that song is like worship song to me. If you play that song, I will break down here because it takes me down there. And I just started using the power of visualization that if I can see it, I can become it. I saw the magazine, I saw a guard wearing uniform, and I saw things that were higher security. I will take night bus from Oyo, I'll stand 11 hours in that vehicle and come to Lagos, come to Oingbo, come to the place and buy back editions. Buy back editions, yes. So I now continued reading it. I said I can come and work with him. So I left Oyo, relocated and came back to Lagos, and I decided to stay in my mother's house. Remember, my mom and I were not friends. So. Yeah, she had disowned me, but I just had to. There was no other place I could go to. So I came, I used to sleep on the chair. My legs at one end, and that's where I used to stay. And everything about my life was, was already down. I didn't have the documents to say I begged to apply for a job. I didn't have it. I started there, my first salary was 5,000 naira. I was living in Maryland and I have to come to Oingbo every day. Security is not 20 days a month. Security is 24 hours. 
Yes. And it was at that point in time that they started training me more. Since my field was executive protection, I now grew up to becoming a bodyguard. Yes. Now, remember, I was running from myself. I was a failure at home. I was a failure. Yes. No, you know, once you're a failure, you, you already mark yourself. Nobody needs to tell you. So I put myself as a failure. So doing that, I worked as a bodyguard and I was attached to the MD of an airline. But the man had some tendencies that were not very ethical. And um, I saw things. I saw things that I couldn't stay any longer. That now became a, a cross that I didn't want to. I didn't want to get involved. And I decided to move on. And when I was moving on from there, I decided to settle in Jaconde down here with a friend. And remember, security was still my passion. So the, so the understanding and the depth of of interest in security just kept growing and growing. My friends were getting senior in military circle and co. So I began to do um, emergency response in alarm center, okay. Lekki. And that means if you put a telemetry system in your house okay. and there's a panic, touch the button, my team and I will be there in 10 minutes. Now, that was interesting because the competition we had then was pavilion, which was Israeli managed. Yes. So they were quite slow, but when I got there, remember, I didn't have a life in, anymore. I was already trained in executive protection, and what it means is that I needed to protect my principal. So if the man is to be killed, I'm the one to take the bullet. That's the training I was trained in. So if I have a 10 minutes contract time, whatever happens, I must be there 958. And so with the SOP, the operating procedure, my men are there. Nine minutes, at the ninth minute, they must release a gunshot as a warning. Yes. So, but, so we now started taking over accounts. So I kept escorting them. So that's where I got to meet expatriates. Because now you're meeting expatriates, then you now have to do the route mapping from here. Yeah, Oshodi was a kill point. Um, Akmongba, this Akmongba was a kill point. Uh, once you pass Ikoi, that um, Lagos Island, just that Lagos Bonny Island, camp. not Bonny Camp. If you pass, yeah, Deniji, yes, was a kill Adeniji. point. So we know that any time we are passing there, all guns are hot. You must be ready. And every time we had our walkie talkies on, everybody. So they were always giving me intelligence. I had police frequency, and everything. So I got in so deep into it that I didn't even have emotions. Then I moved to Halogen. Yes, I went to Halogen. It was just growing from one level of sucking me into right. security. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I, I became the head of um, um, operation, deputy operations manager in Halogen. My code name was King Kong. We didn't have real names. So my responsibility was to protect the lives of staff and protect the life of clients. What does that mean? You are in charge of the security of the whole company. So I live with two walkie talkies in my back, two phones with me. So I was always on the hot wire. Once I come on air, on radio, ah, no, 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 you don't want to be, you don't want to be in that crossfire. You don't want to be from um, um, this company, um, MTN. When MTN was rolling out, we were in charge of protecting MTN, all the base stations, all the network. Um, I was responsible to providing all the BTS, all the towers nationwide. Airtel, then it was Econet. Then um, intercellular will switch off the whole intercellular one night and then go and work on it. People think that no network, nothing. Is we switched off everything to work on it overnight. So I didn't have a life. Day I was once my. You were married. I was married. I was married. So I used to sleep in the office. You know, because of my experience of before, sleeping in the office is not a new thing. Uh, so I lived like that and. Even very, you step know, up. yes, step up and life was there. So I left Halogen. Before I left Halogen, I was transferred to the north. And when I went to the north, I was responsible for Meduguri. Now, you go to Meduguri. I, I go on for anywhere, Wala. I. Uh, I go anywhere. I changed my name there in the north to Abdul Karim Abdulaziz Abdul Rahman. If you see me for anywhere, Wala. So if you call me for Abdul Wala, I answer you for. And you speak the Abdul Yeah. Yeah, so what I did, I just grew the beard, I wore my jalabia. 
Well, I just live and put everything well, like, like <laughs> everything I blend it very easily because I needed to do cumin and I was not entering peaceful locations. They were very hostile. Yeah. Yeah. Hostile. So in the morning, what I do, like maybe I needed to have a meeting with every all the teams. So at like seven o'clock, I'm in Lagos for a meeting at Ikeja by 8:30, 9. I'm at the airport flying to Abuja. Yes, I land 12 o'clock at Abuja, do my meeting by 1 o'clock, finish by 2 on my way. I'm going to Joss. I'm sleeping in Joss that night. When I finish in Joss, the next morning, I drive to Kari. The team in Meduguri picked me up at Kari. We have our meeting in Meduguri, 8 p.m. that night. Next morning, I'm off to Kano, finish in Kano, 2 o'clock. I'm on a flight down to Lagos, enter Lagos, turn around to Portacourt, sleep in Portacourt that night, finish Portacourt, then drive to Wari. Go to worry then from worry go to Ibadan. Ibadan. What was Come your back to pay Lagos. like? My pay. Mm -hmm. I did. I did not live for pay. I was living for experience. My pay was less than 150k. You loved the job. I said, remember, my father was killed, so passion had eaten me up. Okay. Yeah. I had been disowned. So these were people that loved me. Okay. Yes. So my life was phone calls. There was nothing good. How are you doing today? Any call I receive is bad. No, not business. It's no, bad. Bad, bad news. Bad news. Yes. Yes, on that trade, on that trade, everything. Yeah, it's like, it's like an undertaker. <laughs> I said I joined Excel. I mean, UBA through Excel. Yeah. Excel was like the UBA um, had a subsidiary called Excel Logistics. Okay. So non-core banking staff yes. were put under Excel Logistics. Now in Excel Logistics, they had a, an MD called. Now used to provide all the support staff. Security was support, uh, cleaners was support and co. I branched out as a department from being Excel Logistics to Excel Security and Protection Services in line with the law. So it was there that I was hitting because our profit was less than one million. Because by then it was the bank that used to bear responsibility, the only service charge, which was minimal. So I now went into, I wanted it as a business because I served in halogen and I knew the business. In halogen, I had a target of 1,500 guards. I grew it to 7,500. So I knew what I could do. So when I was headhunted, I, I did not want to come and work as a security manager. I wanted to do business because now business became interesting to me because I have a wife and children. They need money. Yes, yes. So I need to understand how to make money. Everywhere I worked, I worked for training, not for money. So when I got to Excel and I started working like that, I started understanding that, look, money is important. Money is a defense. Money gives you options. If you don't have money, you don't have options. You are limited yeah. to your thought pattern. So, you, you get where, so now the hunger to now make money, I had gotten in my industry, but I needed to make the money because my children were growing before me. So I had three children. My salary was like 300K, and the school fees I used to pay was like, 180k. I had my mom. I had my no. I had my mother-in-law living with me. I had my sister-in-law living with me. I had moved down to um, what do you call it place? Um, Aja here. Now, the money was not enough, and I knew that my children were growing. If my first daughter, she's than yes, she's 15. If my first daughter is going to school, she'll probably be paying 800K per term. If he enters, another 800K. So that's 1.6 million. The highest salary I can get, if they promote me, promote me, promote me, will be 500K. So if we divide it by this, I'll need at least four months to save to do that. It will not work. So I had to take a decision that, look, what do I do from here? So it was at that time I now decided that guy, I need to make it happen. Now, I had learned a lot from a lot of people, a lot of companies. It was at this time that I needed to take that decision. What was that decision? I said it is either I get a new job or I go and start a company. That the only way the parachute would come out was to take the risk. Now, everything I had learned, I had learned passion from Pahek Security Company working day and night. I had learned technology from Alarm Center. I had learned business in halogen security. And I also learned corporate governance from Excel. So I learned all the things I needed to learn. It was not left for me to practice it. So I now said, OK, the first thing I needed to do was, OK, to decide what would be my target. 
because it is my target that determines my direction. My direction will determine my association. So my target at this point was, if I was going to make any sense in anything I'm doing, I needed to put a target to myself. So I wrote with my hand, 100 million naira as my target. Yeah? So I wrote 100 million naira and I put it on the wall. Now, our bed at that point in time was on the floor, so, and I always used to face the wall. So I put it at home. Yes, at home. So I put it and I faced the wall, 100, 100 million naira. I put it on my ceiling, 100 million naira. I put it on this wall, 100 million naira. I put it here. So everywhere I turned my eyes, everywhere. My bathroom, my toilet, but in my immediate environment, all my wristwatches, everything was reading 100 million now. An alarm is set on my phone every 30 minutes. So once I hear it, it automatically reminds me this book of the law shall not depart out of thy side. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night to observe to do according to all that is written there, where thou shalt have. If thou shalt meditate, thou shalt have. Now, so my, pro my thing there is that I now started thinking about 100 million now. Anybody that comes with 10,000, 2,000, 100,000 naira business does not work. So now that, that now made me to look, okay, what kind of business does not work? Does not work? If you bring a business of 100,000 naira to me, don't come near me. It's a waste of executive time. Uh, yes. I won't listen to you. Yes. Yes. See, your, yes. You see? You see? No, see, even apart from that, even apart from that, thank God that I even spent some time. There are two things that are necessary for me to change. One was my target. And that target was 100 million. And no time? No, there was time. Now, my time was one year. Wow. wow. No time now? Huh? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. So if I'm going to do this kind of target, then everything has to change. And every minute now, counts. Yes. So this one determines my direction. And this one determines my association. So okay. if you are not in that Which line... Which one determines your association? My direction. Okay. Yes. My direction... Determines determines the direction. direction. Yes. yes. So Back when up. I said I wanted a hundred million, I only walked around the people I needed. Yes. To get the hundred million. To get the hundred million. Yes. Wherever they your are. next hundred million could be sitting here. Yes. That's all. Yes. Every time... I go out on security operations, the people we arrest or we have to encounter are young people. Okay. Now, from the statistics, Nigeria, 70% of our population are youth under 45. Okay. Now, when they... 75%. Yes. Now, the challenge is that people don't know what that number is. So let us assume from the old census report that is 180 million people. So 75% are 135 million people are under 45. Now the report from the Presidential Committee on Job Creation says 40% of these people cannot be employed. That means 62.5 million people cannot be employed because they don't have skill. No skill. They are unemployable. Yes, unemployable. That is where the justification of Nigerian youths are lazy comes from. But, and, you know, for me, one of the things, I learned every success principle I have from the Bible. Yeah? And the Bible says that the, the castle is uh, protected, but there's a spider in the bedroom. So what I do is that I try to get to your bedroom. So if I know that you are 20, through social media, I will attack you. There's even said also that there's a, the, 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 the lizard will enter, that there's a guard at the gate. So from there, what I do is I'm able to pass the back and get to your sons and begin to change their mindsets from this early. So now, that changed the way I thought, the way I do things. Okay, now, while they are getting it, so this were my target. I know everybody has smartphones, so how do I get to them now? So I now said, okay, the easiest way to get is on IG, Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, Twitter. Now, Snapchat. I'm not a fan of Snapchat. Not a fan of Snapchat. Yes. Not Snapchat. So, what is Snapchat? Snapchat. Uh, oh, ignore that. Snapchat is like, it gives you your news for the day, your uh, weather report. You do Snapchat. I love Snapchat. Yes. You see, that's a demography. So, what I did was to put this and also WhatsApp. And so, WhatsApp is limited to your contacts yes. and their contacts. So, what I did now is that I set up a social media team. Hmm? 
And this social media team is head. I have a content unit. I have a media unit. I have a distribution unit. So once pictures, videos are taken, he as video will, will take the video and then will send it up here. And then content will add the content and they send it to distribution. On that distribution, there are different groups. So that, I don't get the social media team and I put them under groups. So I have like, under one group, I have like 10. I have under 10. So once in the content is prepared, in the morning, it is sent to these groups. So by 9 o'clock, everybody knows that you have to post. Once it is 9 o'clock, once that thing is dropped in the, in the, in the content, in the mother event, um, um, sites, that is the Ubon King Foundation, everybody screen grabs from them and send. And send. So in one hour, you will have 150,000 people seeing that post. At that time. So when you open your phone, you just see it run down. Ubonking, 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 register. And it takes at least seven impressions before somebody takes a decision. Yes, you may not have known me today. You have seen here, you hear, you hear, you hear. So well, I just need I just need one. And it's just knowing you today is it's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> now so, I've seen him one on one. so this now yeah. became the strategy I'm doing now to get to the young people. Because the boys that are doing Yahoo, the boys that are doing this thing, are using Snapchat to influence them that come and see money, come and see this thing. They recruit these boys or take advantage of them. So this now became a new security strategy for me. Now, before I got here, remember I already started making some small change now, that 4.5 million in 20 men. So I grew from 20 to 40 to 80, to 100. So if I do 100, then, th so that now meant that 4.5 times was growing. Mm -hmm. It was growing. So I was already making this. Then the company now said, King, can you provide a security vessel? I said, okay, security vessel. Fine. I mean, I didn't know that much. A vessel as in ocean? Like yes. Ocean yes, vessel. ocean going vessel with armed men on board. Mm, so like they now told me, King, how much will you charge? And I said, um, they gave me a budget that please shouldn't be more than this. So I asked somebody, said, the guy said, you charge me per day. Now, I did not know that per day. <laughs> so me, I agreed. <laughs> now, the guy said, King, make sure. Them in Naira. No, <laughs> so make sure you don't charge more than. Charge A day. So I was making, I did not understand the implication until after 30 days that I was paying somebody for, for the vessel, which is at that time was Navy men on board plus. My, does not no, 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 it's just the just vessel. Empty vessel. Uh, drive. Just the vessel. Drive. Just the vessel. Yes. Just vessel and crew. Then yes. yeah. yeah. five my staff. Then for feeding them every day for one month. No, ah, calm down. <laughs> Do your calculation. Because what happened was that when I was doing that, my cost here was um, oh, yeah, they that is always the interesting thing. You know they don't have a big space. So all of them come back with no neck. Some I sent with shirt and rather the shirt with tear. Because they don't have a lot of spaces. Yeah, they don't move around a lot. And they, they don't spend yeah. at sea. So now yeah, when they the pay me, so every month I was being paid, I was being paid, um, but I was paying So the rest was my own. Now, 365. So they gave me my first contract letter times three months as probation. When you do your calculation here, you have multiply that in Naira. I meet my I met my target in three months. The Bible, the Bible says in Matthew, and I like meeting pastors because this is where I like this is where I like to fight pastors. 
Matthew chapter number 25, verse 15, 16. He says the man had five talents, another had two talents. Yeah? One had one talent. The Bible says that after he that had five talents went and traded. 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 They did not say pray. We have prayed too much. The problem with the church is that we don't know how to trade, but we know how to pray. But pray, pray attracts no, the contract. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, prayer no. attracts the contract, but you have to put it Yes. Down. Show me your faith That's by your works. Jesus told the man, he said, go, when they asked Jesus for tax, mm. Jesus said, Peter, he didn't say pray. He said, go to the river, <laughs> carry your hook, cast it. The fish you catch, open the mouth, remove a coin and pay. Don't pray. But there was one of knowledge involved in there. That was work. But <laughs> go and work it out. Every time you say, go. And the money. It's like what we were discussing earlier. Yes. So when I wanted to buy my vessel, I bought it cash. I didn't go to any bank. Okay, you finally bought it. I have vessels. I bought. I just cleared. I've just bought one now. It's here. It has been released. A third one is coming in. So I don't buy with bank money. Because even bank, when I saw the Bible, I don't support bank. Not, no, no, no. There's a reason why. Don't be. Now, in this. Expansion. Okay. Well, let me paraphrase it. Um, according to scripture, in this Matthew 25, please read 13, 14 to 430. I'm giving my money to the, to the, uh, to the bank. And yes. You are giving me my money with interest. Yes, good. And no, there's a particular word there. Usury. Usury. No, no, a particular word. At least. At least, okay. At least I would have gotten interest. Mm. So what the Lord is That's saying is, yeah, so that means this is the least form of investment. If you put money in the bank, that means you cannot think. That is you cannot think. That is you cannot think. That means if you have money in the bank, it means you cannot think. Let the bank think for you. Yes. 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 So now, yes. Where you have cut it off. Yes. I so, want the money to be working for yes. you. Yes. Don't want to crack your head anymore. Now, so when you now go back, when you now go back to the bank, eh? No. You see, that is what, that is what, madam, madam, that is what they tell you. That is what they tell you. And you know, that's why I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a venture capitalist. So this is where things started happening to me. As money was coming in, my expenditure was growing. The more money you talk about, the more problems. Yeah. Yes. So as my mindset was growing, my mind was not, my mind was not growing at the pace of my money. Yes. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And there are a lot of wrong investments. Yes. So that's when you now find out that the first enemy of, of success is success. The first enemy of success is success. Now, one of the things I always tell my friends, which I have gotten some new people now, is this, that, and this is what you should prepare for, because everybody I see here is that between two mountains of success, there's a value of failure. If you're ever on top here, you're coming down here next. Whether you like it or yes, it is automatic. After here, you're going up. There is nobody that has stayed up. Now, what happens but, is that, wait now, some, Oga, wait, wait. No, so, sorry, I was just going to say, but there are some people who have stayed down. Yes, and I'll explain why. Now, when you go up, it's hard work. Now, when you get here, complacency sets in. Once complacency sets in, you don't know. Before, you had maybe one million. You can manage that one million. 800,000, you can manage. 400, you can manage. You will now begin to live on past glory, on past, yes. I yes, you get that before. I can do it again. But meanwhile, all your energy are dissipated. So you gradually start going down. When you go down, the problem is that to climb up the next hill, you don't know how steep it is. So to climb up is more difficult. Yes. So what, the only way to move from one mountain to another mountain is to build a bridge. Yeah? And what is a bridge? A bridge is people. Resources. People. Now, if you want results in three months, plant corn. If you want results, because in three months you plant the corn, the corn will come out. Instant businesses. 
If you want results in one year, plant yam. Yam, yam you can harvest it, boil some, roast some, cook some. But if you want result of a lifetime, plant men. 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 People. Men. So you deliberately have to grow men. Deliberately. Not as an assumption for different things. Because when you become weak here, these people are the ones that will carry you. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. David escaped into the camp of Abdullah and then from his father's house, uh, who were in debt, distressed, and discontented. He became their captain. There were 400 of them. So these men were in debt, distressed, and discontented. He built these men. And First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 10, he says, And these were the mighty men of David who came to stand with David. The same men with, with him in Abdullah. To complicate matters, he said, I wish I could drink from the well of Bethlehem. And three men broke down the guards and went. These were the men he had trained. He had gotten to the point whereby they are taking his wife and taking his children. These men wanted to stone him because he had built them up. Now, if not because he had good leadership skill, he would have, he would have been in a big mess, big mess at that point in time. So for him to become king, he needed to build mighty men. You don't eat alone. You don't eat alone. So what did I do? Now looking at this, I went back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, when God finished the Garden of Eden, 29, verse chapter 1, 29, he says, and he told unto Adam, I've given you everything for meat. But he gave him restrictions. He said, guy, don't touch this one, but this one you can trouble. So there was profit sharing. Now when you don't, when you don't share profit with your staff, they become your next competition. Mm. You don't have any stake. Mm. They become your next competition. <laughs> So, like me, when I knew that I was building men, everybody that has worked with me, my group managing director is 42 years old as of now. The guy was, in short, he became a graduate while we were in the office. And I, my, my office was, my bedroom was my office. His dining table was his office. Approval was done by Yahoo Messenger. That's how we used to do approvals at those days. Now, his wife is an architect. She works in ATO Consulting. She was a junior director. Right now, that boy has grown. So what did I do? Because I have trained him well enough. So I decided to plan my continuity, my, my legacy plan. And what did I do? I built him a house in Abuja, a duplex in Abuja. I gave him a car, and I also gave him 10% share of a subsidiary. And I did to all the senior managers the same thing. Where do they want to go? Nowhere. Yes. <laughs> They will grow that business. Yes. So I now left there three years ago. So all I do now is I just teach and build content, and that is all. So these people now, their loyalty is unto death. All of them, apart from the one that has the house, um, the ones that are moved into their own houses, every leadership has a rent for their own house, minimum of 1.5 million to 2 million, depending on your grade. Then you have your school, the children's school fees sorted out. Your wife has a salary from the company. You're entitled to trips twice in a year from the company. Why do I drop my application? <laughs> <laughs> okay, very interesting. Very interesting. Quickly round up. So CA, let's go. CA joined us. He was yet a graduate. And um, he was working in a movie student, Port Harcourt. So... He came to Lagos, the wife was a bit concerned, was in my church, and the wife and I were in the same department in security. I still do security till in today church. in church. So remember I said First Samuel, chapter number 22, verse 1 to 2. This became the pillar of my company, that you must be in debt, distressed, or discontented. So when you come with your application, I don't look for your first class, second class. I look for these three criteria. I qualify. <laughs> now, with this one, the person's passion level is high. Because if you give this man a lifeline, he will take it with all his life. So this man is who I can cultivate yes. and indoctrinate. Once you have somebody who, in quotes, is fantastic, the person begins to see, I have a better option. I have something. Yes. So I started like that as a finance officer. So as he started as a finance officer, I was, he looked like somebody that could have character. So I changed him from there to strategy. So he worked with me. I removed him from finance because I needed him to open his mind 
to the business. Then from there, I moved him to leadership, then to management. Then I now dropped it on his head. And I said, the only way to get out of trouble is to enter trouble. So the only way I run my company is through WhatsApp. I have a WhatsApp of only three of us. We call ourselves the pyramid. Yeah, the pyramid. So two of us can take a decision. If any two of us agree on anything. Yeah. Yes. And it is like this. So if I don't agree, and the both of them agree, I give them veto. I don't veto any other thing. Yes, they can veto me. Any two can veto me. Any two can veto me. But when the consequences, remember, I also allow them to fail because they need to learn from failure. And they have failed a few times. I know it, yes. And I also sometimes I allow the failure to happen. So that it bites them because I don't lose. I learn. They learn. No, see, you, you see, if you ever look at life in terms of money, you, that's where the problem is. I look at it as cost of training. I've lost over as cost of training. The first car I was to get was a Toyota Sequoia, and I had the money. So the day I was going to buy, yes, the day I was going to buy the car, I heard that I needed to sell the money. So I now took it to my pastor. Um, who was relocating out of the country, and I gave it to him, and he screamed. And I said, because one of the things that the Word of God does, it Let's also... Yes. Sold the money. I he sold the money. It. Okay, you heard that someone needed the no, money. No, I heard, I went to have my bath, and I was... The Holy Ghost called, yes, to go and sell that money. So I took it to him, and I told the pastor, please go and cash this money now, because I don't guarantee in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> that money... <laughs> that, so I now took the money and he, he, was, he screamed. And that was the exact money he needed for him and his wife to buy that ticket that day so that they could travel. I did not know. You know, that's why when you give yourself to the Spirit of God, he will tell you, the money I have is not mine, it's for God. I am only a vessel. So the day he told me to stand down from the company, I didn't pray twice. I was at the airport on my way to Ghana with my current MD. And I said, God, I said I should hand over the company to you. He knelt down in the airport there, and I prayed for him. I said, well, so since then I removed suit. So I now started with that and I went into lands. Okay. And I began to work with them to try and remove the values. By the time I begin to hold the students, all of them go crazy. And I pump values into them, pump values. So when you now come and tell a Nigerian student that, you, that look, I need you to mobilize today, give them 2,000 naira. They'll tell you, no, they'll first tell you that after four years, you bring 2,000 naira. That means, you look at me, the value of me in one year is 500 naira, should be? It is 500. Uh, 2,000 naira. So, 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 so uh, that's 49 naira. And divide by 30 days. One naira, 69 couple. And my parents take the same me goes to So when they hear this one, they don't want to listen to politicians. Remember, target. Your target will determine your direction. So once you determine your target, that direction, it is now there. You bring out what you are ready to go. Uh, discipline and focus. For me, was I wanted money. Money was my own. So I started to read business materials. And when I began to read business materials, I was reading books, I was reading, first of all, my first books I read was Mike Modoc, ah. because I wanted wisdom. Yes. Now, when I do that, I now also balance it with books, uh, materials by um, maybe, who are these guys? Okay, the people were T.D. Jakes, Paul Adifasi, um, who, are these, who is this guy again? Dan Locke, Grant Cardone, uh, Russell Bronson. This one is my problem now, this boy. He has changed everything in the entire world. No, Russell, Russell, Bronson. Bronson. Russell Bronson. Russell Bronson is the person I am studying now, aggressively. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. There won't be some, yeah? some revolutionary... Russell Bronson, Russell Bronson... Yes, yeah, Russell Bronson is 37 years old. Yes. But the guy spoke for 90 minutes at an event, and he made $3 million. I now look at this guy. This guy is 37 years old. And he went to speak in an event, speak in an event. 1,000 people bought his products for $3,000 each, $3 million. Apart from how much they paid him for speaking? No, no, no. That's no what, that's they didn't pay him. Oh, okay. They didn't pay him anything, no. Uh, 
They didn't pay him any one naira. They didn't pay him. Yes. Now, these one thousand people, with these one thousand people, decided to. When you sign up on this program, you pay him two hundred and ninety-seven dollars every month. So in a month, apart from this three million, you make two hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars every month. So now me, I decided to go and study what a funnel is, and I'm already applying like. it. Like, it's like. <laughs> The, my whole team are going through the training right now. That is Russell Brunson's training. Yes. Now, Russell Brunson taught me things about funnels. So as I speak to you, I have what they call a value ladder. So the principle of the funnels is simple, to get the hook, the story, and the offer. Now, at this point here. Is that the name of the book? No. no, the, no, no, no. Those are the I, I will tell you the principles. principles. Now, so at the lower level here, on the right-hand side has to do with value. As the value go up, the cost go up. The cost go up. So this is in dollars or in Naira in dollars. Let's use, uh, let's use Naira, whatever. Let's now, dollar sounds better. So at this point here, I need to engage people to accept me. So I started doing podcasts, started doing IG stories and lives, Facebook live. Here is free. What this one does is to build trust and bring you to this level where you have a free book, free plus shipping book, free webinar. Now, when you do the free webinar, free plus shipping book, maybe one hour, two hours. Now, you now migrate to what they call the Mentor Me course. So you now have a Mentor Me course, which good, at this stage, you will be paying for it. But here, you are not paying. So basically, it's to build trust. They go to mentor me and this. Now, when you do this, it now goes to the mastermind, mastermind group. At this mastermind, you'll be joining me to Dubai, Ghana, uh, Seychelles, or Mauritius. At this point in time, the fees are higher. Then you grow from here to the uh, inner ring, where you're going to maybe like 10x in America, funnel hacking life. Yes, those major ones. Now, conditions are that you must be able to spend $10,000. You must be able to do it. Now, what happens is that the trust is being built. And everything that I do here, yes, everything that I do here is supposed to take you here. And to be honest, I was a little bit, when I saw it, I was really wondering. Skeptical. Yeah, I was skeptical. Because everything, poor people make money front end. Rich people make money back end. So if your this thing is not a system, it's not going to go far. Yes. So That's why it's called the hook? Is that it's no, the hook basically is to attract you. Like if you see now, um, the, when you read any or watch any of the videos, it will hook you. Like the one you said you saw. You will like it. It will hook you. So it will move you to the free plus shipping. You want my free book? Get it. You just pay for the shipping cost. Now once you do that, you now start getting, what happens is that once you agree to this part here, you enter a list. Physical. Yes, physical, there's physical, then there's they digital, online. there's online. The so, online like yes, be a, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, everything is to get your details and I begin to feed you. And I, it has to be intentional and be strong enough. My aim is to get them to succeed. But there's a process at this stage is where they are, here and here. As I, sp as I speak to you here, there's even a course that I'm putting for they call the UMC, Undergraduate Mentorship Course. Now, because if I don't mentor them, they will not move on to the next level. Now, by the time they start making money, which is what happens right from school, and I have a lot of testimonials, I expect them to be disciplined enough to do like Mentor Me course. Now, Mentor Me course is... Value yes. The, the, the value the, when you come to mentor me course, yeah, mm. remember, I have a problem at hand. If I don't deal with this one, it will still cost me another yeah. one thirty-seven million. Yeah. The next year. So I also have to deal with this problem. Yeah. Yes. And in dealing with this problem, I need to now extend my hook to a different set of people. When I did Thinkation this year, that Thinkation that had four thousand people cost me 
I only got support of the rest were from the company. Now, but I have these people. So what I do is I feed them with information. Those that are strong enough move to mentor me. Now, in mentor me, you will do a 30 days program that has belief, belief, purpose, strategy, service, relationship management, money, and things. 30 days. When you go through these 30 days, your head will, will fire. So now, I will not be talking to people that are students anymore. I'll talk to people that come into that bracket. And when these people begin to enter this level, you now have people that move. Because I also have banks, some bank um, general managers who have also been following me over time. They now enter into mastermind. Mastermind, three days. Both crews in Dubai. Sorry, sir, but the students themselves, some of them, some, some of them, yeah. some of them will have grown. Ah, many have grown. Not some, many of them. Many have grown. grown. Many have grown. Many have grown. I have students that are turning over millions. Mm -hmm. I also see, apart from this, I also show them that I don't need government to be rich. Yeah. So when they see that, I become a testimonial of what they can do, yeah. what they can practice. Like now, next two weeks, I'm going to you. They have the state students, national students, are putting a whole pack named after me. So what I decided was to carry the ambassador to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, come with me. I've told Indomie that let's empower 50 students with carts. Each of them will be given a cart, and I'm paying for it. The cart is 20,000, that is 1 million for the cart. But these students will return to Indomie every week, 800 naira a week, but you make 4,000 naira a day. If they continue that, they will be able to grow a business and sort of a cart, a, cart, a cooking yeah, cart. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. that kind of yes, okay. yes. Uh, so thank you so very much. That's your own. Thank you so thank much. You yes. very much for coming. I I I thought there was no need if we met and we didn't have value added. You know, um, of course you know if we had to pay. Like you said, it's <laughs> per hour. And depending on the people I'm talking to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if it's certain people and above. <laughs> so the association, what has gotten us four hundred thousand naira at least free, free for how many hours? Because we've now done more than even an uh -huh. hour. Mm. Right? So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. My, my name thank is Ubon King. And Ubonking.com. But it's a privilege to be here, and I, I don't take it for granted. Why I'm doing this now is because I don't want our young people to lose the grasp of their parents and not there. So it's the responsibility of us to show them how they can defend Nigeria tomorrow.